We open with a great professional wrestling match. Dax Harwood versus Cash Wheeler in the Owen Hart Tournament qualifying match. He went out there and they just busted their ass. And it's all headlock takeovers and arm drags and head scissors. For like five or six minutes. And the place is totally into all this wrestling going on. And they're fighting the corner and Dax hits an accidental eye poke. And CM Punk is on commentary saying, man, I used to hit my sparring partners with eye pokes all the time. So... What a horrible sparring partner. Well, God damn. He's not fighting no more. Jesus. I can't reach. remember the last time someone poked me in the eye when I was rolling. Well, it was, he was not rolling with him. Just... Yeah, he was. He has to do all that stuff. I'm sure he, was... he wasn't a boxer. I, I bet he was trying. I bet the eye pokes were not when he was going for triangles or arm bars. You never know. I wasn't there. I can't uh, say anything firsthand. I can only speculate. Regardless, Cash got poked in the eye and he was hot. And that just cranked up the intensity even more. So after 10 minutes of intense action, both guys are smelling blood, trying to go for the finish with cradles. They did a back superplex into a high cross. It was terrifying. He teased a double count out and got back in the ring. Dax goes with a sharpshooter, of all things, here in the Owen Hart qual tournament qualifier. But he hesitates. He's not sure he can put up such a brutal Dude, It wasn't hold. even that he hesitated, but like he, he's about to go for the sharpshooter and the fans boo. They that. booed a man going for a sharpshooter in the Owen Hart, and it was funny because, listen, I, I, I don't want to call these fans Johnny Come Latelys, but bro, if you watch this match, do you know how many Bret Hart tributes and Owen Hart tributes were in this match alone, including they actually did the finish of Bret Hart and Owen Hart at WrestleMania, but it was a, it was a near fall. Yes. And uh, fans were all fine with that, but goddamn, you go for a sharpshooter, they're going to boo you out of the building. I couldn't even believe it. Well, he hesitated where there was a reluctance to put such a punishing hold on his own tag team partner or shock at the uh, reaction of the crowd. Uh, it allowed Cash to turn the sharpshooter into a cradle, but Dax turned that cradle into another cradle, and he won. And I noted last week, based on their promos, Cash just wanted to pay tribute to Owen. Dax said he had to win. And in the end, Dax won. So everything works out there. And uh, the men appeared to be in tears. They were so happy with what they had done. It was so meaningful to them. The crowd loved it. Uh, the crowd may have been booing because they didn't want the match to end at all. They were very much into this. But uh, Dax wins. He's in the Owen Hart qualifier. Or excuse me, the Owen Hart tournament now. He's qualified. It's qualified for the tournament. Yes. Which basically is a bracket. Essentially, at this point. There is an way. extra bracket that is called qualifying matches. Yes. Here in this tournament. Yep, very good match. Awesome match, in fact. I guess technically, I guess technically, it is kind of weird to do qualifying matches for a tournament and not just add another bracket. But I guess the difference is, if you added another bracket, then everyone is locked into their opponent in the next round. Hmm. Whereas if you do qualifying matches, you can then shuffle everything the way you want to build your bracket off the qualifying matches. I hadn't thought of that. So I guess that's uh, in storyline why they did that. But yes, an excellent, excellent opening match with two great professional wrestlers. And uh, I liked it a lot. And FTR continues to be the hottest act in wrestling right now. They announce Hangman Page versus CM Punk for the AEW title, official for Double or Nothing. So there was supposed to be an angle to set up the announcement. But then Hangman got COVID. Oh. And so uh, they couldn't do an angle. And so instead, they just put a graphic on the screen saying CM Punk versus Hangman Page at the pay-per-view. And uh, I think everyone knew it was going to be CM Punk versus Hangman Page at the pay-per-view. But clearly, they must have four weeks of, of storylines because they couldn't wait a week to shoot the angle to then announce the match. For whatever reason, whatever storyline reason there is for between now and the pay-per-view, they had to announce the match on this show tonight. Well, the match was announced, and Punk left the commentary desk to go to the ring to cut a promo. Talks about making his comeback to pro wrestling, how he came to AEW because he loved the locker room and how competitive it was. He wanted to see if he could still go. He respects everyone he's been in the ring with. He lists all the men, Dustin Rhodes, and and uh, he respects Hangman. Hey, Not Eddie Kingston, though. And people booed. <laughs> he says he can't promise a win. But he does promise to give these fans 100% because without these fans, there's no CM Punk. So it's very, very clever that CM Punk said, I can't promise I will win. Because in old school pro wrestling, if a babyface promises he's going to win, then he wins. Right. That's it. So CM Punk saying, I can't promise I will win, 
Uh, but I will promise that Hangman will know he's in a fight. You immediately had doubt. And obviously it's important to have doubt going to this match because I don't know if CM Punk is going to win or not. I don't know if he's going to win. I don't know if he's going to lose. If he had said, I promise I'm going to win, then I would be thinking for sure he was going to win. But him saying that, now I'm, now I'm like, well, is he going to win or not? I don't know. So that was very clever the way he worded that. And you could hear when he said, I can't promise that the crowd kind of went silent there for a second because I think they were, they were kind of thinking the same thing like, Man, they have. So is he going to win or what? I, I still predict he'll win, but you're right. It, it's so to doubt the way he said it, which is a good thing. Doubt is a good thing. Hold yeah. Excalibur. We've got heat with him. <laughs> I was clearly joking when I said they sped up his voice. I had nothing to do with this, Mr. Caliber. <laughs> oh, now you have to apologize. His name is not Excalibur. His first <laughs> yeah. name isn't Xavier. I like Excalibur. He used to be yeah. a caliber. If anything ever happens, like AEW goes under or whatever, you know they always have those those uh, those commercials about drugs, and they have that guy that reads the list of side effects. Yes, one out there. I, 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 it's potentially lethal taint fungus. <laughs> well, that'd certainly be bad. And I am not exaggerating that at all. <laughs> My point well, is, is they, I they will never re- take this drug under any circumstances. <laughs> potentially lethal taint fungus. Lol. <laughs> Lol. I hate him. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.